Well, actually, the idea unusually came to me very uh, in, in a rush. I remember quite distinctly, it was about 2000, I was in London and I'm a museum junkie and I was in a, a museum I've only ever visited the once, it was the Horniman Museum, uh, sort of in the south part of London. And they've got a big ethnographical section and sort of natural history section. And um, they just had these amazing nests hanging in a cabinet. Um, and I looked at them and I thought they were fantastic. And then I just had this idea of making nests out of American dollars. And, and of course, I, I think simultaneous to having the idea of the, phys the physical material, or the physicality of the work potentially, I also knew that, well, for me, the idea of working with the American dollar was a potent one. I became more amazed every nest I made about how beautifully designed and realised, you know, birds' nests are. And the, the effort for me was to duplicate how marvellous each, and, and how particular each individual nest was, and then, you know, each and the nest of a particular species. It was a very potent experience because of that very idea of these being the, um, the archaeology of, uh, of, of, of the lives of birds really stored away as much as and in somehow even more than looking at uh, the, the, the birds themselves which are also in the museum. Perhaps it's not what museums have ever set up to do, maybe with the curiosity cabinet they have, but it's the fact that the world is a very curious place. It's an amazing place and it's filled with curious things in the best sense of the word. Uh, and that seems to be accentuated by the way that objects are then, you know, displayed in cabinets. An innocent idea that you could actually put all these things in a in a museum display and you could comprehend the world. I mean, in a sense, the, the museum cabinet makes the world somehow more, more incomprehensible rather than more comprehensible because you've just taken little fragments of it and conveniently left aside the, um, the context. And I find that as curious as well mm. as the, the implications of what's not in the cabinet that are pointed at because of their absence, because of what has been put in the cabinet, I find more and more very interesting. Mm. So yeah, museums are um, treasure troves conceptually for me. When I set out to make that work and I knew that shredding the American dollar for me, it was sort of conceptually, it was an act of, you know, sort of revenge for the, the sorry state our world is in. And I mean, I, I certainly don't mean to direct my sort of wrath about that towards the United States alone, but it's, it's sort of the the inevitability of the globalised world that we live in, that you know, the environment really is under enormous pressure. Socially and globally, suddenly we're, we're aware of that in a way that we weren't sort of five years ago when I was still making that work. It's amazing how quickly the tides changed. But the power of the greenback has really faded you know, in the last few years. And so now the greenback suddenly has perhaps become to represent a world and a system that's, that's foundering, a system that used to be watertight and isn't any longer. And now with the financial downturn globally, there's, and, and with all the other political events of the last few years that have changed the idea of America as being a, a sort of a, like a figurehead nation for, for the rest of the world to aspire to, like all of that has changed in the minds of so many of us. And I think that our regard of, you know, the American dollar in that context, along with the financial downturn, it, it's different now.